This is Code.org. I'm currently working on CS Principles, Unit 5, Building Apps, Lesson 17, Building an App, Canvas Painter, Puzzle 19, Relative Indexes. So before we dive in, we already have a bunch of code do here. If you've been following along, you do too. If you do not, you need to go back and do the other parts of this lesson. I have tutorials if you need help with them. All right, let's see what we're doing. When looping over an array, we use a counter variable, typically i, right? In our for loops, we use i to keep track of which index we're at. We can then access the contents at each index with the syntax list i. So list would be the name of the array here, and i would be that index value that we're using. If we want, however, we can access the contents of the next element as well, since its index is just one greater. Yep. For example, if we are currently focused on the element at index i, then i plus 1 would be this next one. It would be this index. Gives us access to the next element in the array. In other words, you can reference indexes relative to your control variable. So it will perform the mathematical operation within the uh, square brackets here. And so if i was equal to 7, it would grab whatever is at index 8. All right, so the computer automatically will perform mathematical operations, and then whatever is within these brackets, uh, that final result will be the index that we are accessing. So if we put plus one here with i, and the i loop loops through to three, our final index we would get is four, because three plus four, right? Well, wait, if the i loop loops through to three, the final index we would get is three, because i would be equal to two, because i has to remain less, than the uh, uh, Boolean expression at top. Anyways, all right, let's dive in. We are going to use relative indexing to create our final effect, which will look sort of like etching of the image. The idea is simple. For every x, y location in the event list, draw a straight line between that location and the location stored 10 spots further down the array. You will use the line command to draw a line connecting these points. Do this. Read the documentation for line. Okay, so Canvas, if we go down to line here, and to get the documentation, see examples. will tell us all about line, y1. Okay, so the first x location, first y location. Okay, so these are two different points, this point and that point. Cool, all right. Uh, yep, set the style for the final button in the design mode. Give a label like edge. Give it a descriptive ID and attach a click event handler to it. Call clear canvas to clear the screen. Okay. So let's go ahead though and do they show us styling? Oh yeah, they leave it like that. Etch. Okay. Design. I'm going to click here. And I'll say etch button. And then I'll just write etch on it. And I guess I'll leave it the color they did. And then we do need an event handler for this. So I'm going to click on events and just click insert show code and it should show me yep there we go delete some extra spacing i had here okay great here's our new code so we got that set file yep descriptive idea attach a click handler call clear canvas to clear the screen so at the top of this, like our other functions or our other on event listeners, we clear the canvas. Okay. Create a for loop that counts from zero to event list dot length minus 10. Okay. So control for a for loop event from zero. So we're going to start at zero. And what do we end at? Event list. Event list. And then dot length so this will be go to the end of our array minus 10 okay so well what is this doing event list obviously it's our global variable that we made an array out of this array remember is created as we move a mouse around the screen we append an item to this array the item that we're appending is the event parameter the event parameter com uh, contains the y and x location of the mouse whether the keys are down, whether there's space keys press, all sorts of data. And what append means is we're adding it to the list. So every time we move the mouse, every time a dot is drawn, it is being added to our event list where the mouse was, 
what we were holding down, what keys were going on, all of that, every single dot. And then we store that all in a big list because we can use it later. If we want to redraw it, we really just blank the screen, take all of that data and redraw what the person drew, however we would like. Now we're going to loop through it all, right? So event list dot length, that's going to be the length of this list, but minus 10. We're doing minus 10 uh, to stop us from going all the way to the end. And that is for, uh, you're going to see in just a second, right here. All right, so create a for loop, we did that. Use a line to draw a line between x, y locations of every list i and list i plus 10. So what we're doing there is every dot that is drawn, we're drawing a line between one dot and dot number 10, or well. So this would be, we start at the event list zero because our index is zero. So we would start at dot zero, right? So at the event zero, the first dot drawn, and we draw a line from that to the 10th dot drawn. And then we draw a line from that to the, uh, then we draw a line from 11 to the 21st. And then we just keep looping and adding, t we, we keep going through our loop, right? So from 0 to 10, from 1 to 11, from 2 to to 12 and we draw these lines from each dot to a dot 10 away and we're, that's why we're stopping at length minus 10 because it would create an error if we did not do this since we are adding 10 to draw it if we tried to draw a dot from our very last dot plus 10 nothing would happen it would create a bug so that's why we're saying go up until the length minus 10 of the list Okay, I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to take a look at what they have here. Event list i dot offset x. Yep. And then event list i dot offset y. And then this whole thing, which is event list i plus 10 dot offset x. And then I'm going to go to text mode so we can see this. That is looking good. Use set stroke color and or set width inside the event handler to make the lines visibly other visible. Otherwise, they will be transparent since we set the stroke color to transparent at the beginning of the program. Okay, use set stroke color and set width. Okay. So I'm going to grab those. Canvas. Set stroke color. Because that's the outline. And I'm going to do it at the top. Because we don't need to do it inside the loop. We just could do that once. Set stroke color and set width. Okay. And so this is kind of up to us. Um, let's set the stroke to 3. Actually, set stroke and or set width. Let's just do that. And I'm going to say black. Let's give this a shot. Whoa, that's super cool. Something you want to keep in mind, though, and I'm realizing this now, watch. I'm going to hit spray paint or original. So notice that now everything has an outline. You do want to, at the bottom of this, set the stroke color back to uh, be transparent. And that's RGB A, and we just did 0, comma, 0, comma, 0, comma, 0. That last one being its transparency. So we want that to be set to the color, and that way when the function's done running for etch, it doesn't, the color of it is done. We clear out the stroke to what it used to be.
All right, so one more try. <laughs> that is super cool. And then also real quick, and just keep in mind how this works. So when we etch, when we click that button, we're going to run this. The canvas is cleared, and we set our stroke color to black. Then we're going to use a for loop. Our for loop starts with a variable i set to 0. It says, each time I run, I'm going to add 1 to i. i always needs to be less than the length of my array, minus 10. And I talked about why that is. So then it says, okay, i starts at 0 and drops down. Now it grabs the first index of our list, of event list, which is the first dot drawn, gets the x value, and gets the y value. It then grabs the tenth index of our list, gets the x value, gets the y value, and draws a line in between 1 and 10. It then hits the bottom of our loop, goes back to the top, says plus plus, so it adds 1 to i. So i is now 1, because we started at 0. It drops down and gets the first dot, or the second dot technically that we drew, it draws a line between it and the twelfth dot that we drew. It keeps going. So, and we get this. Oh, well, this. <laughs> Pretty cool. I'm excited to see what's next. Let's keep going.